Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I'd like to just give you guys some perspective um, on growing figs. You know, whether you guys are starting a fig collection of many varieties or you're expanding your fig collection into more varieties, this is really the time of the year that a lot of us are kind of thinking about doing this and are doing this. Um, I think one important thing that I try to mention to you guys a lot this time of the year is that these little sticks turn into big trees so that's that's one big thing to consider there um, but I really try to give you guys some perspective as we go along in uh, hopefully every video that we do um, but I want to like really put you guys in the mindset of my own my own mindset and show you guys where I'm at six years into this um, and what I'm what are the things that I'm thinking about um, I don't think there's anything wrong with growing every fig you can find um, I think there's some beauty in that and I applaud the people who are doing that um, preserving varieties is also a great thing um, maybe you're breeding certain varieties and you need certain genetics from cert from specific figs but for me I personally don't see the value um, this six years into this um, growing every variety you can find uh, like I said I, I do appreciate the people and I I respect people who are doing that <clears throat> but for me I'm I'm way past that originally I thought there was a there was a thought in my mind at some point where I said you know what maybe I could grow them all or something or maybe I could grow many of them um, not them all but maybe I could grow you know at least 300 varieties maybe 500 varieties um, and there's people out there that have that have 500 to a thousand varieties of figs so I um, yeah I just I, 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 I want to put you guys in this mindset so where I'm at right now it's pretty simple is that I'm going around looking at my list here this is my list of keepers you can find this in my spreadsheet in the description of every video I've ever put out these are the figs that I value the most right here um, and this list is gonna change this isn't set in stone every year this thing changes here um, this is just where I'm currently at and I would say we're gonna it's gonna be a number of more years before this list is really finalized and I can narrow this down plus there's more that I'm adding in there are new varieties that I'm acquiring so you know I have probably this year for the first time ever gotten rid of more varieties than I have acquired and that's a big step in the right direction um, there's a lot of fig varieties out there that really are just not that good and really don't have a place in a collection in a in a, in a serious collection um, some of them are quite redundant um, you know I would say most fig varieties are actually are pretty good if you can ripen them properly if you can let them if you can grow them in a dry climate the majority of them actually are going to be pretty good. It's kind of crazy. Um, but there are a, a number of varieties that are just really quite bad. And you may never know and you just keep growing every single fig you get your hands on. And um, not only can they be quite bad, but they can be really bad in your climate. They could be way worse. Um, if I wanted to, let's say, get fruit right that was the goal of all of this um, I'd be better off growing different varieties of like apples or or pears or uh, or peaches I'd get way more fruit and at a higher quality uh, figs are difficult to grow and not all the figs that I grow here are gonna do well you know um, there's a lot of characteristics that I think a lot of people overlook like splitting and spoilage and rain resistance and hang time and just characteristics that people just completely ignore, don't even ask about, don't even think about. Um, just really don't factor them into their decision. They don't do the research that they should. Um, and we, 
we all, I also am guilty of this, where we put aside some of these bad characteristics, like splitting is probably the worst one here in this climate, in many climates, because um, if it splits, it's probably going to spoil. So just across the board, splitting is just one of the worst characteristics your fig can have. But, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I still am willing to grow a fig that, let's say, has really good flavor, uh, even though it's a splitter, even though it doesn't do well here. Well, it's supposed to be really good. It's supposed to be really tasty. Well, the issue is if it doesn't ripen properly, I don't really like them. As much as I like figs, as much as I'm obsessed with them, I don't like figs unless they're ripe. <laughs> An unripe fig isn't very good. Um, and if it splits, it's probably not going to get ripe. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with all this right now is determining, and it's very, it's become very obvious to me now. It took me a while to figure all this out, but it's very obvious to me what figs are going to be the better performers, um, which figs are going to perform and have the better characteristics here. These are the figs that I would, I would put into my keeper list. Now, Black Madeira, as an example, is in my keeper list simply because I, it's hard to find a fig that tastes like it. It's really quite something. Um, even though it splits, it doesn't perform all that well here. It's too late. I would still keep it on this list for now. But inevitably, I know Black Madeira is never going to be on my list. Here in this climate, it's not a fig that anyone should grow. Um, it really isn't. There is just too much splitting. I said the same thing sort of about Italian 258 this year. And I could very well just as easily have Italian 258 here in this, this section right here. And I'd be pretty happy with that decision. But I know down the road there's something that's going to be replacing it. There's got to be something out there that's going to beat it out. And that's where kind of these figs come in, or maybe even this section right here, because there's different categories. So the early figs, the mid-season figs, the late figs, and the very late figs. I'm going to find the best one in each of these categories, because I want to have a, a, a lengthy season, right? I want to be able to take an early fig, put it in the greenhouse, let it ripen in by July 1st. I want to have a very early fig don't put it in the greenhouse, have it ripen by August 1st. You know, um, we're gonna cover the entirety of the season. You know, that's obviously a big goal, right? So, you could make an argument that, all right, well, Ross, what about if we're just looking at, you know, these, what, at what time they ripen, what about, the, what about how they taste? Well, that's a fair point. Um, you could make a very strong argument that a lot of this is redundant, not just in in when they ripen, but the other category cate, characteristics about them are also redundant, like flavor. You know, you could categorize Villa de Bordeaux and maybe even Ron de Bordeaux. Maybe you could throw in Moro de Caneva. You could throw in Nerucciola de Elba. Maybe the Daloso. Um, you could throw in. Let's see. That's probably it on this list. Maybe. Um, maybe Black Celeste. You could group all these up that taste similarly and just choose one, right? That's that certain category. Or you could say the same thing about White Madeira and Strawberry Verte and Blanche de Saison. They all have that that green Aishia characteristic to them in, in terms of their flavor. Um, you could do the same thing with you know, something like Azores Dark and LSU Tiger and you can do the same thing with Smith and Socorro Black and Violet Sapor and Borges So Grease and probably a bunch of other figs. Um, and you could group all these up and say, all right, well, which of those, which, of, which is the best out of those, right? And then you also have all these flavor profiles that we talk about. Which of these flavor profiles do I really like? Well, I really like caramel. I really like light honey. Honey, fruity berry, melon berry, Bordeaux berry, light berry. I could probably live without tropical. I could probably live without cherry candy. 
I would definitely want fruity honey and uh, an elegant berry. This is actually my favorite category right here. So, you know, that's at least nine categories right there that I just named off that I would like to have some sort of fig from each of those categories. You know, so it's kind of getting a little bit more intricate in that sense. But as I've sort of mentioned that some of these really are just redundant that, you know, um, like I said, why have Violet de Bordeaux if I could have Moro de Caneva, which ripens earlier and tastes pretty much the same um, or pretty close. I mean, they're not they're not the same, obviously, but uh, it has a similar profile to it. So. You know, I'm kind of like, that's what I'm getting at here. It's the same thing with Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross. If this thing's a mid-season fig, why should I have Italian 258? Why should I have Black Madeira, right? Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross not only ripens earlier, but also is better with the rain and splitting. So this is kind of where I'm at, guys, right now. I could go on and on and on about this, and um, we will in future videos, but... I think you guys kind of get the point here is that anything that I'm looking for at this point has got to eventually break into my top 10, right? First off, it's got to break into this, these, this keeper list. It's got to be at least a keeper. Then it, it has to not just be a keeper, but it has to go into a further subsection of, of scrutiny. And if it doesn't, at the end of the day, when this is all said and done, it's out. So I want to thank you guys here for watching this video. Hopefully this gave everybody some perspective. Uh, I don't want to put anybody down here. And those of you guys who are buying varieties right now or you bought some varieties right now or you are collecting varieties, um, I think it's all very admirable. But, uh, you know, research. Yeah. There's always somebody out there, you know, maybe I'm the guy in the Philadelphia area. There's somebody else doing this in Seattle. There's somebody else doing this in Texas, you know. So do your research, find out who that person is, make friends with them, and ask them questions. And we will talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching this one, guys. Take care.